everybody. Today, I'm really excited to share with you how you can make beef tallow at home. You're gonna take your chunk of fat and pull off any silver skin and uh, cut off any peats that are obviously still meaty. We wanna just trim it up a little bit here. Okay, now we're just gonna start slicing it. You could throw this through a meat grinder if you want it to render down even faster. Cut it into about one inch pieces and stick them in this heavy bottom pot. Non-reactive stainless steel is perfect. Yeah. Any meaty or connective tissue parts that I'm finding along the way, I'm just pulling out and putting in a scrap bucket. My chickens will actually eat most of the scraps and anything the chickens don't, the cat will. So it's not gonna go to waste, but just is one last thing to have to filter out of our tallow in the end. All right, now that we're done with that part, we are ready to cook it and render it down. So we've got our pot full of little chunks of beef fat. We're gonna put this on the stove top and low, low heat. You could also do this in a slow cooker, put it on low heat, come by and stir it every 20 minutes, half an hour or so. And when it starts to be pretty liquid, when most of it is liquid, we can start scooping it off and putting it in our jars. All right, we're back. It has been a few hours now and everything is rendered down pretty well. It's still not completely liquid, but it's mostly liquid. So I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling a little bit off and putting it in some jars. You're gonna wanna strain this through something either cheesecloth or um, I have a little mesh, metal mesh strainer that I'm gonna use here. Something to catch any chunks, any little skin pieces that might still be in there. And you're just gonna ladle this straight into a nice sterilized jar. Since we're not going to be processing this further you do wanna start with a sterilized jar. You can do that with boiling water. You could wipe it down with vinegar and then let make sure it dries completely, of course. If you're gonna freeze them, you need to leave quite a bit of head space because things can explode in the freezer if you don't leave them enough in a room. But if you're planning to put this in the pantry on the shelf for a year or so, you can fill it up pretty close to the top. So think about that, um, if, whether your intentions are to put this in the freezer or to put this in the pantry, that can determine how full you fill your jar. Once you've got your jar though, I'm gonna go ahead and cap this. I'm gonna do my two part lid system here. You can absolutely use metal lids. And sometimes these won't seal, which is fine, but a lot of times, if you put your lid on while it's nice and hot, it'll actually seal anyway. You'll get a seal on there. So there we go. There's one jar down. Here's a few reasons why you should consider making and using tallow in your daily life. Tallow has an incredibly high smoke point, which makes it the perfect cooking oil for all of your frying needs. Tallow is rich in vitamins. It is a good source of A, E, D, K, and B1. And those are all fat soluble and bioavailable because it's in a natural food source rather than a supplement. So your body's actually gonna absorb most of those nutrients. Tallow is also high in CLAs, which are known to fight cancer, and there it's a great source of omega-3s. Like I said, it's so easy and inexpensive to make at home. Most of what you find in the store is gonna be hydrogenated, so though it is still maybe a better option than seed oils, it's not gonna be the same product that you can make at home, and it's going to be three to five times the cost of making it at home. It's amazing topically. Tallow makes a wonderful body balm. You can whip it or you can just use it straight out of the jar. You can infuse it with herbs or essential oils. It makes a wonderful lotion for your face and whole body. There we have it. The first few jars out of this batch. I'm gonna put the rest of this back on the stove top on low to just keep rendering. If you're doing this in a slow cooker, 
know that you can take a break and let it go overnight on keep warm. Just make sure that you do have it on like a keep warm setting rather than a low setting to avoid any scorching. But if you wanna do that and you're in a slow cooker, you can totally just put on the brakes overnight, let it keep going on keep warm. And then if you need to kick it up a notch and put it on low in the morning, go for it. I am really excited about this. I think I'm going to get quite a bit of tallow out of this batch. So I will put in the description exactly how many pints of tallow I got rendered for that $30 price tag. I'm excited to see exactly how much it comes out to. Let me know if you have ever rendered fats at home, if you'd be willing to give it a try and let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and have a great day.